There's a couple of cases where you can have what's called an infinite or an unlimited number of significant figures. And it sounds like some crazy mathematician thing, but it's actually really, really pretty practical. So the first one is it's a number that is counted. So if you have, you know, five apples, all right, you have exactly five apples. There's no ambiguity there, right? Uh, so it's about 5.000000, you know, it's infinite number of significant figures. The other example I have here, if there are 24 people in your classroom, you count them, and you don't have any uncertainty about how many people there are. So it's essentially 24.0000 and on and on. And that is an infinite number of significant figures. Um, so the other example is defined quantities or relationships. Uh, that includes things like three feet equals one yard. So that's the very definition of a yard, or part of it, is three feet. There are, I mean, there's no ambiguity at all there. It's an infinite number of significant figures. Uh, 60 minutes is one hour. 16 ounces is a pound. Those are all defined quantities. So they're considered to have an infinite number of significant figures. And if you think about it, you know, it makes, you know, it makes perfect sense. All right, so, um, anyway. All right, so we're going to go over a couple of sets of math rules, and um, the, usually the mistakes that people have on problems like this, it's not these two math rules. It's usually just identifying the significant figures in the first place. So if you get down pat what we just went over, you shouldn't have very much trouble uh, with these because they're both pretty easy. All right. Um, the bad news starting out with is that your calculator you know, it does a lot of great things, but it knows diddly squat about significant figures. I mean, nothing. It always assumes that you want to carry it out to the, well, as I put on the slide, the bajillionth place. All right. And that's just not true. Your calculator is not very smart when it comes to significant figures. So you have to know how to round the significant figures. All right. So suppose you're adding and subtracting. This is the first rule. Adding and subtracting two numbers. All you have to do is find the number with the fewest number of decimal places after the decimal point. All right. And then you round to that, you round your answer to that number. All right. So, for example, suppose you punch in 346.71 and 23.158 in the calculator. Um, you're going to get something, well, you, you, you know, you might do it longhand like this. Uh, you're going to get 369.868. And that's what, you know, in the fifth grade or earlier, if they're showing you I did, that would be your answer. Only problem is, uh, that's not the answer taken into account of significant figures, like if you're doing real-world uh, stuff. Um, you would say 369.87. You would have to round it to the fewest number of decimal places after the decimal point, because the fewest number of decimal places after the decimal point is right there is 2. So you start out with uh, 369.868, and then you'd have to round that to 369.87, because the fact that your number with the smallest number of decimal places uh, after the decimal point is two. All right. So the round, the rounded value contains the two decimal places after the zero because, it, again, as I was just saying a minute ago, the 346.71 contains two decimal places after the zero. So a nice summary here on this slide is that the answer cannot be any more precise than the least precise number that went into it. Makes perfect sense. All right, we do. Uh, rules for uh, multiplication, and they're just about as easy as the addition is attracted. They're a little bit uh, different. Look for the number with the fewest number of significant figures, and then round the answer to that number of significant figures. So, say if a person, this is a division problem, if a person runs 42 meters, 42.0 meters, in 6.7 seconds, you would calculate his velocity by dividing 42 meters by 6.7 seconds. The only problem is you get a number like that, uh, and we're not even going to pretend. Okay, you punch it into the calculator, and it gives you 6.2686, blah, 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 meters per second, and you know perfectly well we don't know his velocity, you know, with that degree of, uh, of precision. So it's going to be imply a lot more certainty than what we actually have. So what do you do when you multiply two normal-looking numbers? And you get this ridiculously long number that you obviously can't use all of it. So we've got a set of rules just like we did before when we just went over. Um, we round the answer so it has the fewest number of significant figures of the two divided numbers. So 42.0 has 3, uh, 67 uh, has 2. So instead of the 6.2686 blah 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 blah, 
The answer is going to be 6.3, since that has two significant figures, just like the 6.7 does. You notice that it goes from 6.26, blah, 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 to 6.3. That's because the 6 is 5 or greater, so we're rounding up. Uh, I think we all learned that, you know, a long time ago. But uh, so now the poor calculator is sad because you know so much more than, than he does. And so that pretty much wraps it up. Um, and uh, we'll continue on with more stuff later.